Good evening from NASA's Kennedy Space Center in Florida. You're looking live at Launch Complex 39A, where SpaceX is counting down one hour and 15 minutes away from liftoff of a Falcon 9 rocket on a mission to resupply the International Space Station. This mission is set for liftoff at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. That is 12.30 a.m. UTC from Launch Complex 39A here at Kennedy Space Center. The mission will be carrying nearly 6,300 pounds or nearly three metric tons of supplies and experiments to the ISS. Continuing a busy spring of activity, or late winter in this case, is still a few days away from the equinox of activity at the ISS with uh, docking of a recent crew launch uh, that launched here from Kennedy Space Center back on March the 2nd, uh, delivering four new crew members to the space station. And then over the weekend, we saw the Crew-5 mission with four crew members returning to Earth after uh, their months-long expedition. And now just a few days later, SpaceX again is in action tonight with the scheduled launch of the CRS-27 resupply mission to the ISS. There's a closer view of the Falcon 9 and the crew dra or Cargo Dragon spacecraft on pad 39A. The Cargo Dragon at the very top of the vehicle and below that, the first stage, uh, Booster 1073, launching for the seventh time tonight. Here's a wider shot of the Launch Complex 39A area, looking from south to north. You can see in the center bottom is the Falcon 9, 215 feet tall, 65 meters in height. Off to the left, just to the left of the vehicle, is the fixed service structure and the crew access arm. Uh, that's the arm that the astronauts use to board the spacecraft before crew missions. Tonight's launch, though, has no people on board. It's a strictly resupply logistics delivery heading up to the space station. But that crew access arm was used over the past 24 hours to load time-critical cargo into the pressurized cabin of the Cargo Dragon spacecraft. We saw that access arm swing, aw swing away a few hours ago from the hatch, uh, indicating that the late cargo load was complete. And then the, car the uh, countdown right now is an hour and 12 minutes and 44 seconds until liftoff tonight. Liftoff occurring about an hour after sunset if it goes on time. To the right uh, of the Falcon 9 rocket is the water tower for the sound suppression water system at pad 39A that will dump water onto the launch pad deck in the final seconds before launch. And then off to the far right is the Starship launch pad tower under construction at pad 39A for future launches of SpaceX's Super Heavy Booster and Starship rocket. We saw that tower, which stands about 475 feet tall, structurally completed last fall. However, outfitting of various components uh, continues in that Starship launch complex area uh, before testing can get underway here. Countdown will pick up in earnest at T minus 35 minutes with the beginning of propellant loading on board the Falcon 9 rocket. Weather conditions this evening are favorable for launch. The forecasts coming into the countdown indicated an 80% probability of acceptable weather conditions for liftoff tonight. The only weather concern in the latest official forecast from this morning was a slight risk of thick clouds. However, so far, the thick clouds have not materialized over the spaceport. You can see a thin layer of high clouds over Kennedy Space Center right now. That is not expected to be a concern. Here's a view from the KSC press site about three miles from pad 39A. You can see some news media and photographers staking out their positions with tripods uh, for tonight's launch now one hour, 11 minutes away. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the thumbs up or the like button here on our YouTube stream. That helps us attract a larger audience as we ramp up our coverage for tonight's 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time or 12.30 a.m. UTC liftoff.
SpaceX's countdown is approaching the 60-minute mark. We're about 25 minutes away from the start of propellant loading. Coming up on the time of sunset here at Kennedy Space Center. Launch is scheduled for precisely 8.30 and 42 seconds Eastern Daylight Time. That's 12.30 and 42 seconds a.m. UTC. The launch is timed precisely uh, to expedite the rendezvous of the Cargo Dragon spacecraft with the International Space Station. Uh, the time is uh, set for roughly the moment that Earth's rotation brings the launch pad underneath the orbital plane of the space station. The Falcon 9 will be heading off to the northeast to line up with that orbital path, setting the stage for docking at the space station by the Harmony module at 7.52 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday. It's 11.52 UTC, so it's about a 36-hour rendezvous from liftoff until docking. Great shot here of the sunset here at Kennedy Space Center looking off to the west with those uh, wispy high clouds uh, reflecting some of the last orange rays of sun this evening. Great shot here also of the Starship launch tower off to the right with the chopstick uh, arms there mounted at the bottom of that tower. Those are the arms that will run up and down the tower on rails uh, during Starship operations when those uh, days come. You can see the pedestal is also there for the orbital launch mount for the Starship rocket. Uh, that launch mount is being fabricated off-site and will be moved into place at some point uh, before the launch complex is ready to support Starship operations. Now, less than 59 minutes from liftoff, we'll see some of the uh, see some of the lights there at the pad that will be lighting up the Falcon 9 rocket during the final countdown as it gets darker here on the space coast of Florida. Everything's shaping up right now for an on-time launch at 8:30 p.m. Eastern Time.
53 minutes, 13 seconds, and counting. Let's take a look at the uh, various parts of the Falcon 9 rocket on pad 39A, beginning with the first stage, which is about 15 stories tall. It's booster number 1073 going for its seventh flight to space tonight. It'll be targeting a landing on a drone ship uh, nearly 200 miles off the coast after launch this evening. This booster is powered by nine Merlin 1D engines burning kerosene and liquid oxygen propellants. Uh, these nine engines combined will generate 1.7 million pounds of thrust for the first two and a half minutes of the flight. Above the first stage is the black carbon fiber inner stage. Uh, you can see in the inset image here the titanium grid fins that will be extended from that inner stage when the booster separates from the upper stage. The inner stage comes back to Earth with the booster. And inside that inner stage, out on the launch pad, is the engine bell of the upper stage, which is powered by a single Merlin vacuum engine. It's a derivative of the Merlin 1D used on the first stage. That Merlin vacuum engine also burns kerosene and liquid oxygen and will generate about 200,000 pounds of thrust uh, during tonight's launch, performing the acceleration needed to place the Cargo Dragon spacecraft into orbit. The second stage is, of course, the only element, the only major part of the Falcon 9 that is not reusable. It will be deorbited after tonight's mission and burn up in the atmosphere. The Cargo Dragon spacecraft on top is loaded with about 6,300 pounds or about 2.8 metric tons of supplies and experiments heading to the International Space Station. This Cargo Dragon vehicle is numbered or designated Dragon C-209. It's going for its third flight to space. Each Cargo Dragon and Crew Dragon is uh, currently rated for up to 15 missions. It fit up to 15 uses. Flight number three for this vehicle is on tap this evening. See, it's getting darker here on the Space Coast, uh, but the crowds are starting to gather with a few more photographers out there next to the famous countdown clock under the flagpole. Looking out on the horizon is the Falcon 9, three miles distant. Coming up on 50 minutes until launch, we're now about 15 minutes away from the start of propellant loading on the Falcon 9 rocket. We expect to hear some calls from SpaceX launch control in the next few minutes uh, as the team is polled for a go or no-go to proceed into the final phase of the countdown.
Now 44 minutes, 24 seconds and counting. Less than 10 minutes away from the start of propellant loading. The SpaceX launch control team is working out of firing room four at the launch control center tonight. The launch control center is located here at Kennedy, uh, just in the shadow of the vehicle assembly building about three miles away from pad 39A. That's where SpaceX managers and engineers are gathered to oversee the countdown. They'll be monitoring systems on board the Falcon 9 rocket and ground systems as well, and the Cargo Dragon spacecraft on top of the Falcon 9 to make sure all those elements are ready for liftoff. Here's a live shot of the vehicle assembly building off to the lower right. You can see some of the traffic uh, going into the parking lot of the Launch Control Center uh, where, where the SpaceX firing room is located. Uh, where they will be overseeing the launch operation tonight, 44 minutes or 43 and a half minutes away. This is located just across the street from uh, our location at Kennedy Space Center's press site. Beautiful evening uh, shaping up here in Florida for launch. While we wait for the update from SpaceX Launch Control on the status of the go-no-go no go pole for propellant loading out at Pad 39A, just a couple of miles to the south, you're looking now live at uh, Pad 41 at uh, Cape, where ULA's United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket is undergoing testing in preparation for its inaugural launch later this spring, currently targeted for May. The Vulcan Centaur rocket is currently at the pad. It was actually rolled out last week for a tanking test of the Vulcan first stage booster. It was loaded with methane and liquid oxygen last Friday. ULA ground teams rolled the Vulcan rocket back over uh, to its hangar over the weekend to take shelter from some bad weather on Monday. It returned to the pad today and we expect in the coming days to see the next phase of ground testing for the Vulcan which will involve loading liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen into the Centaur upper stage as a taking test for that unit, that part of the rocket. And then the plan is to follow that with a full up tanking test, a WDR, a wet dress rehearsal of the entire uh, vehicle, the Vulcan first stage and the Centaur upper stage together. And then another test will follow that in the coming weeks with another full up tanking test, which will culminate in a flight readiness for firing, firing or a hold down test firing of the Vulcan rocket's BE-4 main engines that'll last for about six seconds while the rocket remains on the ground. That'll be the final uh, big test for the Vulcan rocket in development now for going on eight years uh, before it is cleared for launch in early May, that's the current target, on its first test flight carrying uh, two Amazon broadband satellites into orbit as well as a commercial moon lander for the company Astrobotic. That's the update on the Vulcan Centaur rocket at Space Launch Complex 41, ULA's next generation launch vehicle. Tonight, out at Pad 39A, we're now 40 minutes away from liftoff of SpaceX's Falcon 9.
as we await an update from SpaceX Launch Control. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the thumbs up or the like button here on our YouTube stream. That helps us a lot by attracting, uh, helps us attract a larger audience and more people tuned in to our coverage. We want to bring this primetime launch to as many people as possible. And you can help us do that through the YouTube algorithm by th hitting the thumbs up or the like button right under the video feed on YouTube. We're now getting a few closer camera views uh, from... Launch Captain CaptainNet, pulling is complete, and we are go for propellant load and launch. Good words from SpaceX Launch Control, confirming the team is go for propellant loading and launch on time this evening at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time. These close-up views now coming to us uh, thanks to N SpaceX and NASA. These cameras located inside the perimeter to pad 39A. Propellant load. Falcon 9 tanks are venting in preparation for propellant load. And on uh, countdown, a reminder on abort instructions for non urgent no go conditions, brief CE or LD, and they will approve aborting the countdown. For urgent issues affecting the safety of the operation, operators shall call hold, hold, hold on the countdown net. Launch control will abort the launch auto sequence immediately and proceed on the launch abort auto. T minus 10 seconds, launch control will be hands off and relying on automated abort criteria for the remainder of the count. That was SpaceX's launch director briefing his control team in firing room four here at Kennedy Space Center. Now less than a minute away from the start of the automated countdown sequence. That's when a ground computer will take command of the countdown. We'll be overseeing an automated series of steps to prepare and configure the Falcon 9 and Cargo Dragon spacecraft for launch. At the same time that that sequencer takes over the countdown, propellants will begin flowing into the Falcon 9 as well. Now inside of 35 minutes, we just heard that the launch auto sequence has started. So propellant loading is now underway out at pad 39A, and the countdown is in its automated sequencer. Propellant loading begins by loading three of the four propellant tanks on the Falcon 9. So right now, uh, the first stage is getting its supply of highly refined kerosene or rocket propellant one, or RP-1 as it's known as well as liquid oxygen, the cryogenic oxidizer that's mixed with the fuel to power the nine first stage engines. Up above on the second stage of the Falcon 9 RP-1 fuel, the kerosene is being loaded into the second stage. Oxidizer loading on stage two won't begin until about T minus 16 minutes. The wonderful shot here uh, of pad 39A from a camera on the northeast quadrant of the pad looking up at the Falcon 9 
The Falcon 9 in this configuration stands 215 feet or 65 meters in height. It's a bit shorter than the Falcon 9 uh, stands in its uh, configuration with a payload fairing on, on its uh, regular satellite delivery missions. With that large payload fairing on top, it stands a bit taller at 229 feet tall. To the right is the modified fixed service structure that dates back to the space shuttle era at Pad 39A. SpaceX has outfitted it uh, with new systems to support Falcon 9 missions as well as its uh, black and white cladding, replacing the old gray color of the tower during the shuttle program. At about T-minus 30 minutes, uh, helium pressurant will begin loading into the Falcon 9. Over the next few minutes also, we expect to see some of the vapors uh, begin to appear around the Falcon 9 booster as the super cold oxidizer is loaded aboard. At the very bottom of the rocket, the dark charcoal color, the almost black color, is where the first stage kerosene tank is located. That's the fuel tank. Above that, the lighter portion that has a more of a, of a white appearance uh, with the SpaceX uh, insignia there on the side in blue, that's the liquid oxygen tank on the first stage. And now we're beginning to see some of the vapors appear at the very bottom of the liquid oxygen tank just below the SpaceX, uh, the X in SpaceX that's uh, painted on the side of the vehicle. Over the next uh, 20 minutes, uh, as liquid oxygen loading continues, we will see that frost level, that uh, ice level on the liquid oxygen tank rise up the length of that entire liquid oxygen tank as it's filled up for flight tonight. We're also, in addition to live video, we're getting some audio from the launch pad. We're going to bring that into our broadcast right now. So if you hear any noises <laughs> throughout the countdown, any creaks or vents, that is the noise from the tanking process of the Falcon 9 rocket, completely normal, as the propellants are loaded into the Falcon 9. Now about 31 minutes from launch time. Now less than 29 minutes from launch, 
at two minutes 30 minutes is when we expect it, the uh, helium load to begin. We don't necessarily hear that on the countdown loop, uh, but we can assume that began at 30 minutes prior to launch. Helium is the uh, cryogenic fluid used to maintain pressure inside the propellant tanks on the Falcon 9 rocket. The helium is stored in high pressure composite overwrapped vessels or tanks located each in each of the uh, propellant tanks on the Falcon 9 rocket. The ice and frost now becoming more apparent on the first stage as propellant loading progresses. If you enjoy our coverage, uh, we invite you to please support it by contributing or donating in the Super Chat. We appreciate all of our loyal supporters and to help us bring you live coverage like tonight and other launches on Florida Space Coast as well as uh, help us maintain our ongoing coverage of the wider space industry, industry at www.spaceflightnow.com. Your contributions help us do that and you, one way you can contribute is here in the Super Chat on the YouTube stream. So we appreciate those of you who have done so already, and we invite uh, those who haven't, if you can afford it, if you would like our coverage, please consider doing so. You can also support our coverage by joining our YouTube channel. We have different membership levels available for you to select from, and depending on which level you choose, you can gain access to exclusive members-only video features that we have produced just for our loyal supporters. 27 minutes now until launch of the CRS-27 resupply mission to the International Space Station. Twenty-six minutes, fifteen seconds until launch. I want to show you a really spectacular photo from uh, SpaceX's photographer showing uh, the moon earlier today behind the Cargo Dragon spacecraft. This was taken uh, during final preparations for tonight's countdown. A beautiful shot of the moon, Cargo Dragon, with the crew axis arm uh, extended around the hatch during the late loading of cargo on board the spacecraft. That axis arm retracted earlier this afternoon. Uh, to prepare for tonight's countdown. Looking at the countdown timeline tonight, we've already passed the first few uh, milestones on this countdown, including the start of propellant loading at T minus 35 minutes. Looking ahead at uh, 20 minutes and 30 seconds, that's when the second stage should be fully loaded with its kerosene fuel. A few minutes later, at T minus 16 minutes, liquid oxygen will begin flowing into the second stage. And then in the final 10 minutes, the countdown activities really pick up. At T minus seven minutes, the engine chill down will begin. That's when the thermal conditioning of the nine Merlin Windy engines at the bottom of the Falcon 9 rocket will get underway. That involves flowing a small amount of super cold liquid oxygen through the engines to condition those uh, hardware elements against the risk of damage from thermal shock. At T minus five and a half minutes, the first stage kerosene tank should be full. About a minute later, at 4 minutes 30 seconds, the strong back will begin retracting from the Falcon 9 rocket. It'll swing back uh, just slightly, about a degree and a half from the vehicle for the final minutes of the countdown. Then it'll swing back in a more rapid motion at liftoff. At T minus 2 minutes, the rocket will be fully loaded with propellant. That's when the liquid oxygen loading will be terminated on the Falcon 9. And then at T minus 60 seconds, the control of the countdown will be passed from a ground computer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computer. In that final 60 seconds, the propellant tanks will be pressurized for flight. We'll hear a call from SpaceX's launch director that the team is go for launch, and then the engine ignition sequence will begin at T minus three seconds using an ignition fluid known as TTEB. That's triethyl aluminum, triethyl borane. It's a fluid that is used to spark, basically, the nine Merlin engines. We'll see a green flash from that propellant fluid, or igniter fluid, 
and then the orange glow that's characteristic of the engines themselves as they fire up for launch. And then at T0, four hold down clamps will release to allow the Falcon 9 to begin its climb into space on a resupply mission to the International Space Station. Here's a great shot here of the Cargo Dragon capsule at the very top of the Falcon 9 rocket. Again, this capsule is numbered capsule C209 going for its third flight to space. It's been to the ISS twice already on previous resupply missions. Countdown just passed T-minus 22 minutes and counting. In the next minute and a half or so, uh, the RP-1 tank on the second stage, the fuel tank on stage two, will be fully loaded. And then we'll see what's known as the big vent. That's a stream of gaseous oxygen that will uh, appear from the strong back. That's the structure just to the right of the rocket. That's associated with the start of chill down of the liquid oxygen transfer line a step to prepare for the loading of liquid oxygen into the upper stage. That's about a minute away. You can see it's a breezy evening uh, tonight, uh, but the winds are well under the constraint for launch. This will mark SpaceX's 17th flight of the year and the fourth uh, so far this month. 21 minutes to launch. Now 20 minutes, 15 seconds until liftoff. The big vent uh, now appearing at pad 39A. This is part of the steps to prepare for liquid oxygen loading on the second stage. Stage two, RP-1 load is complete. And there's the call from launch control, stage two, RP-1 load complete at 20 minutes until liftoff. <clears throat> the big vent uh, of oxygen vapors is uh, part of the thermal conditioning process. There's a Transfer line where liquid oxygen flows from a ground storage tank up to the second stage runs up that strong back structure, which also is part of the transporter erector system uh, used to roll the Falcon 9 out to the pad. That line is thermally conditioned uh, or chilled down for the flow of a super cold oxidizer, which is chilled down several hundred degrees below zero. And then at T minus 16 minutes, once that line is thermally conditioned, loading of liquid oxygen will be able to start on stage two.
We've seen the big vent terminate out at pad 39A. We'll stand by for a call. Stage two LOX load has started. There's the call for stage two LOX load. So liquid oxygen now is being pumped into the second stage of the Falcon 9 rocket. That's the fourth and final propellant tank to be filled this evening. Now 16 minutes until launch. Here's a look at the cargo manifest for this mission, which is known as CRS-27. It's SpaceX's 27th resupply flight to the International Space Station under contract with NASA. 6,288 pounds of total cargo, or about uh, 2,852 kilograms. Uh, most of that will be scientific investigations and supplies for the seven-person crew on board the International Space Station. Also, uh, some vehicle hardware used for maintenance and upgrades of the space station are packed aboard the Cargo Dragon spacecraft. So, about 6,300 pounds, or nearly three metric tons, of total cargo on tonight's flight. Here's a view of what the Cargo Dragon spacecraft looks like uh, in space with its nose cone open. That nose cone will be opened about 12 minutes after launch shortly after the deployment of the Cargo Dragon from the Falcon 9 rocket. Inside the trunk, or the unpressurized part of the Cargo Dragon spacecraft, is the Space Test Program payload known as STP-H9. This is for the U.S. military. It carries eight individual technology demonstration and science experiments inside that package, which itself is about a half ton in mass inside the trunk of the Cargo Dragon spacecraft. One of those experiments will be testing a laser power beaming in space for the first time. It'll be testing a small scale uh, power beaming experiment uh, using lasers inside about a 1.7 meter long tube that's all contained inside that payload package. That STPH9 payload for the US military will be mounted on the uh, outside of the space station with the robotic arm and then uh, connected to a power and data port outside the Japanese laboratory module for about a year of operations on the exterior of the ISS. On the right here is uh, an artist concept of a laser power beaming from space down to Earth. Uh, this has potential applications in the future for space-based solar power, where uh, power could be generated in space and then beamed down for use on the Earth or for use on other planets like the Moon or Mars. Also, uh, power beaming in space could be used uh, in the distant future for uh, propulsion to accelerate spacecraft into interstellar space. Also on this uh, Cargo Dragon spacecraft are a number of CubeSats, including uh, three sponsored by NASA and four sponsored by the Canadian Space Agency. Uh, here's one of those CubeSats called Light Cube from Arizona State University. Another one of the CubeSats on board this mission will be the first CubeSat built in Arkansas from uh, students at the University of Arkansas. This light cube that you see here is from Arizona State University. Uh, these CubeSats will be uh, transferred by the astronauts from the Cargo Dragon spacecraft into the International Space Station and then uh, pushed through a airlock, a cargo airlock, and then be ejected into orbit uh, by the robotic arm outside the International Space Station. Back live full screen at pad 39A, now 12 and a half minutes until liftoff. You can see the liquid oxygen line uh, nearing the top of the first stage as propellant loading is now wrapping up. Uh, that propellant load will be uh, terminated at T minus two minutes. Eleven minutes, forty seconds until launch. Let's uh, review the major elements of the Falcon 9 rocket and the Cargo Dragon spacecraft on pad 39A. Beginning with the first stage, which you see 
at the bottom of the rocket that comprises about two-thirds of the total height of the vehicle, 15 stories tall itself. It's powered by nine Merlin Wendy engines that will be generating 1.7 million pounds of thrust uh, for the first two and a half minutes of the flight. That first stage is known as Booster 1073. It'll be landing on SpaceX's drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas out in the Atlantic Ocean after tonight's flight. Above that is the carbon fiber interstage, which has the titanium hypersonic grid fins used for aerodynamic stability during the booster's re-entry back into the atmosphere. Inside the interstage uh, structure, that's a cavity where the upper stage engine resides during the initial phase of launch. Uh, the second stage is powered by a single Merlin vacuum engine producing more than 200,000 pounds of thrust. And the second stage of the Falcon 9 is the only major part of the rocket that is not reusable. It will be deorbited and burned up in the atmosphere after tonight's flight. On top of the Falcon 9, 215 feet above the ground is the Cargo Dragon spacecraft. That's loaded with about 6,300 pounds of supplies and experiments heading to the International Space Station. Now 10 minutes and 8 seconds until liftoff. Nine minutes, 34 seconds until launch. Let's take a look at the timeline of major events after liftoff. We ran through the countdown timeline a few minutes ago. But after launch, the Falcon 9 rocket will exceed the speed of sound in about a minute. It'll pass the point of maximum aerodynamic pressure, also known as max Q, at one minute, 12 seconds. And then at two minutes, 24 seconds, will be main engine cutoff. That's when the nine Merlin engines on the first stage will shut off, followed a few seconds later by stage separation. Once that first stage is free of the upper stage, the second stage will light its single Merlin vacuum engine for a burn lasting about six minutes to accelerate the Cargo Dragon spacecraft to orbital velocity some 17,000 miles per hour. While that's going on, on the upper stage, the first stage will perform a series of maneuvers beginning with what's known as a partial boost back burn using three of its nine engines to uh, slow its course down range to target landing on the drone ship. That'll be followed by a entry burn at 5 minutes 44 seconds, again using three en engines to slow the descent into the atmosphere that produces uh, aerodynamic and heat loads on the vehicle. And then at 7 minutes 7 seconds, with the booster deep into the atmosphere at that point, the center engine, just one engine, will light for a final braking maneuver to slow the rocket down for landing on the drone ship about 200 miles or 300 kilometers downrange. That's roughly due east of Jacksonville, Florida. Uh, for these resupply missions, the drone ship is held closer to the shore uh, than it is for typical satellite launches. Uh, that expedites the booster's return to shore for refurbishment. The Dragon spacecraft uh, will be deployed from the upper stage of the Falcon 9 at 11 minutes and 34 seconds. That'll be followed sh shortly after by the opening of the nose cone to reveal the docking mechanism for the Dragon spacecraft for its approach to the ISS. This booster flying tonight is Booster 1073. It's flown six times before after joining SpaceX's fleet uh, last year in May for its first launch. It has uh, flown a number of Starlink missions for SpaceX, as well as uh, in December launched a Japanese moon lander mission. Most recently, it flew on February 6th with a Spanish communications satellite. And uh, looking at the flight trajectory for tonight's mission, it's heading off to the northeast, flying parallel to the east coast of the United States. We've labeled here the location of the drone ship east of Jacksonville, Florida, as well as the location of Launch Complex 39A. Engine chill has started. T minus seven minutes and counting. There's the call for engine chill down. So countdown activities will be ramping up over the next couple of minutes as we continue to tick toward a launch time of 8.30 p.m. and 42 seconds Eastern Daylight Time. That's 12.30 a.m. UTC.
Stage one fuel load is complete. Dragon is in terminal count. T minus five minutes. Falcon 9 tanks are pressurizing for strong back retract. The Cargo Dragon spacecraft is now in its countdown mode, transitioning to internal power. And it's, the, Dragon is in terminal count and it's on internal power. There's the call from launch control. So the Cargo Dragon spacecraft is on internal power. The first stage has also been completely loaded with kerosene fuel. A liquid oxygen loading will continue on the Falcon 9 for another couple of minutes. Should have a nice view here of the strong back retracting. Strong back retract. Strong back is now in motion. Stage one locks load is complete. Coming up on T minus three minutes and counting. Now inside of two minutes until launch. Stage launch two lock load is complete. Is now terminating on the Falcon 9 rocket. Dragon is in auto idle. Ground gas close out. One minute, 20 seconds. At T-minus 60 seconds, control of the countdown. 
will be handed from the ground computer to the Falcon 9's onboard flight computer. That'll be a call we expect here that the Falcon 9 is in startup that will mark that transition. Falcon 9 is in startup. Dragon is in countdown. Falcon 9 is in startup mode. Onboard computer now in control of the countdown. Go for launch. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 20. 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Engines full power. And lift off of CRS 27. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Falcon 9 now range. climbing away from pad 39A on a resupply flight to the International Space Station. Stage 1, chamber pressure is nominal. Big roar from the 9 World 1D engines. One minute, 25 seconds into the flight. Falcon 9 now beginning its track to the northeast from Kennedy Space Center. MVAC engine chill has begun. Engine chill down of the MVAC or upper stage engine is confirmed to be underway at this point. One minute, 45 seconds into the flight. Here's a nice shot from one of the tracking cameras showing the nine Merlin engines firing the plume beginning to expand as it climbs into the upper atmosphere into the rarefied air. 20 seconds until main engine cutoff that'll be followed by stage separation. There's main engine cutoff. Miko. Stage separation confirmed. And there's stage separation. We're switching over to video feeds from SpaceX's onboard cameras. And we see now ignition. In back ignition. Of the second stage engine. Stage one boost back startup. And now the three engines, three of the nine engines on the first stage are firing for a boost back burn. That is canceling out some of the downrange velocity to target uh, the drone ship holding position about 200 miles northeast of the Cape. Wonderful shot there of the plume interaction from the upper stage engine and the first stage. Stage one, boost back, shut down. And there's shutdown of the boost back burn. So the booster will now coast uh, toward an apogee or an apex of its trajectory for another couple of minutes. We'll see three engines relight on the first stage for an entry burn in about two minutes time. 
The upper stage, Merlin vacuum engine, glowing red hot now, generating more than 200,000 pounds of thrust, continuing to accelerate Cargo Dragon to orbital velocity, some 17,000 miles per hour is the target speed to enter orbit. Acquisition signal, Bermuda. The downrange tracking station in Bermuda is now receiving signals from the rocket as it continues its course off to the northeast, flying just off the east coast of the United States. It's a really clear night here on Florida Space Coast. We're still seeing the glow of the Merlin vacuum engine from our camera here at Kennedy Space Center. And here's a shot once more of the engine bell on the second stage glowing as the Merlin vacuum continues its six minute burn Five minutes into the flight, still seeing the upper stage engine as it heads off northeast from our oh, okay, position here at Kennedy Space Center. Now less than a minute away from the entry burn of the first stage. It is very clear here, so we're hoping to see the uh, entry burn of the first stage as this makes its way back into the atmosphere. The drone ship is also closer to the Kennedy Space Center as it, than it typically is uh, for most landings. So we hope to get a really good view of that entry burn. Stage one of TS is saved. Stage one, entry burn startup. Entry burn now underway on the first stage. We're seeing that on the horizon. And here's a shot of it from our camera here at Kennedy Space Center, dipping through some clouds, heading toward the drone ship, 200 miles offshore. That first stage, stage one, entry burn shutdown. Appearing like a torch on the horizon, heading toward landing to complete its seventh flight to space. Six minutes, 40 seconds since launch. Stage one, transonic. The booster now decelerating below the speed of sound. Nominal trajectories. Nominal trajectories reported on both stages. Stage one, landing burn. Landing burn underway on stage one. We're seeing that live from the onboard camera. You can see the hypersonic grid fins uh, deployed there, dipping through some cloud cover, descending toward the Atlantic Ocean where the drone ship awaits. Stage one, landing leg deploy. Landing confirmed. Stage one landing confirmed. Falcon 9 booster 1073 now has seven flights under its belt, having made its way to space tonight and then back to Earth, settling onto the drone ship a shortfall of Gravitas out in the Atlantic Ocean, some 200 miles downrange. Next milestone we expect to hear will be the cutoff of the upper stage engine coming up in about 20 to 25 seconds. Stage two FTS is saved. Stage 
Chico. We've heard confirmation of Seco, that's second stage engine cutoff. Nominal orbit insertion. And nominal orbit insertion. That confirms that the Falcon 9 has done its job tonight, uh, at least propulsively speaking, placing the Cargo Dragon spacecraft into the expected orbit. We're still about two and a half minutes away from the separation event when the Cargo Dragon will uh, release from the upper stage of the Falcon 9 to begin its 36-hour pursuit of the International Space Station, and now we're seeing a really great shot inside the trunk of Cargo Dragon, where that United States okay, military, that U.S. Space Force uh, test signal. payload okay. resides. Less than two minutes now until payload separation. T plus 11 minutes, now 30 seconds away from Dragon separation. This camera is on the forward end of the second stage. We should see Cargo Dragon release and then fly away in that view. If, if uh, SpaceX switches to it again, this feed is not controlled by us, it's from SpaceX. Dragon separation confirmed. There Dragon goes Cargo Dragon. Confirmed. On its way to the International Space Station carrying around 6,300 pounds or nearly three metric tons of supplies, experiments, fresh food, and other items to the seven person crew on the International Space Station. The next milestone will be the opening of the Cargo Dragon spacecraft's nose cone in about a minute from now. That will reveal the docking mechanism on the Cargo Dragon spacecraft, as well as its forward bulkhead thrusters, as well as navigation sensors and cameras. Thrusters uh, now appearing to fire on Cargo Dragon. This is part of the activation of the attitude control system, reaction control system thrusters using a Draco engines. These are low thrust engines around the, uh, around the Cargo Dragon spacecraft to control its orientation in space, as well as uh, adjust its orbit to match that of the space station over the next day and a half. Dragon and Falcon 9 currently over the North Atlantic, just east of Newfoundland, 
making their way across the Atlantic toward Ireland and Europe. We hope to hear the call for nose cone opening before we sign off tonight. Uh, that's the next major milestone in the mission. And then that will be followed by a series of burns using those Draco engines to raise the Dragon spacecraft's orbit, eventually coming into contact with the ISS around 8 a.m., actually 7.52 a.m. Eastern Time, 11.52 UTC on Thursday. This view is uh, from a camera inside NASA Mission Control at the Johnson Space Center in Houston, where engineers and managers are gathered to monitor the International Space Station. This is the ISS control room at the Mission Control Center. Expect a loss of signal on your phone. So the nose cone open process has begun with the opening of the first signal, gang of six hooks that hold that nose cone closed. The second group of six hooks now opening. That will allow the nose cone to swing open on the front end of the Dragon spacecraft. We're now seeing the nose cone opening on the Dragon spacecraft. So that's a great sign as the spacecraft is approaching the Irish coast. Now flying more than 100 
and 50 miles or so, at least according to the target orbit, that was what was the expected orbit, above the Atlantic Ocean. This nose cone opening, once again, is a major step because it reveals the docking mechanism that will link up with the Harmony module on the International Space Station Thursday morning. Also reveals the forward bulkhead thrusters. There are four thrusters up front uh, that will be used for the deorbit burn at the end of the mission. And the navigation sensors used to triangulate and approach the International Space Station are also under that nose cone during launch. That nose cone protects those parts during uh, the ascent through the atmosphere. But uh, in space, with no aerodynamic forces acting on the vehicle, uh, there's no risk of damage once that nose cone is open to those sensitive components. Coming up on 20 minutes since launch, we're going to stay with this uh, live for another few moments until we can confirm the nose cone is open. Twenty-one minutes, twenty seconds since launch. We did just hear some confirmation from NASA that the nose cone has been opened on the Cargo Dragon spacecraft as it currently flies uh, over southern England, passing over the English Channel and then out over France, uh, southern Germany, and then Eastern Europe, the Balkans, to begin its first lap around planet Earth after launch tonight, which occurred at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 12.30 a.m. UTC. A successful insertion into orbit after liftoff from here at Kennedy Space Center at Pad 39A. We saw the Falcon 9 rocket arc off to the northeast. The booster did its job firing for 2 minutes 24 seconds and then returning to Earth and landing on the drone ship east of Jacksonville, Florida around 7 and a half minutes after liftoff. This landing completed the boosters, or this particular booster's seventh flight. So this reusable booster now has seven flights under its belt in about 10 months' time, seven flights since its first flight 10 months ago. And then the upper stage burned its single engine for six minutes, accelerating the Dragon spacecraft to orbital velocity. That was followed at T plus 12 minutes by the separation of the Cargo Dragon spacecraft into orbit. And then that sets the stage for docking at the International Space Station early Thursday. There will be a series of burns using the Draco thrusters over the next day and a half, uh, the first of which is scheduled later tonight with what's known as a phasing burn scheduled in less than a half hour from now. That's the first major maneuver to begin matching the orbit of the Dragon spacecraft with that of the space station. Tomorrow there will be more additional burns, and then the rendezvous will pick up in earnest early Thursday with uh, an approach initiation burn followed by a fly around or a partial fly around of the space station to line up with the forward port of the Harmony module and then it'll make its final automated approach to the space station culminating in docking set for 7.52 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, 11.52 UTC Thursday. After that the astronauts on board the station 
We'll open hatches uh, leading to the Dragon spacecraft, begin unpacking the more than 5,000 pounds of cargo inside the pressurized compartment. The robotic arm outside the station will reach into the trunk, grapple that uh, U.S. military space test program payload package that I talked about during our countdown coverage, and place it onto a mounting port, a power and data port, outside the Kibo lab module of the International Space Station for about a year of operation. The Dragon spacecraft itself will remain docked at the station for about one month, culminating uh, ending the mission in mid-April with an undocking and a return to Earth and splashdown off the coast of Florida, returning to Earth with several tons of unnecessary hardware, uh, components that need refurbishment, as well as numerous scientific research specimens heading back to labs on Earth from the ISS. Twenty-five minutes since launch, just to recap the target orbit uh, for tonight's launch uh, was to place the Dragon spacecraft into a 118 mile by 130 mile high orbit. And according to SpaceX, the orbit insertion was nominal, so the Falcon 9 rocket did reach an orbit very close to those predicted numbers at an inclination of 51.6 degrees to the equator. And here on the screen here, just to confirm, once more docking at the space station is scheduled for 7.52 a.m. Eastern Time on Thursday. Before we sign off, uh, we want to look ahead, as we always do, to upcoming launches. We'll be covering uh, tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Eastern Time is the scheduled launch of Rocket Lab's Electron launch vehicle from up at Wallops Island, Virginia, from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in the Mid-Atlantic Regional Spaceport. This will be Rocket Lab's second mission from this new Wallops Island launch site in uh, Virginia on the eastern shore. This rocket will be carrying two microsatellites into orbit for the company Capella Space. These are radar uh, remote sensing satellites commercially built and operated, Capella 9 and Capella 10, on board the Electron rocket set for liftoff tomorrow during a window 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time. We'll be covering that live on our website at spaceflightnow.com. On Friday, SpaceX has a couple of launches scheduled one from California, one from here in Florida. The first of those will be from California at Vandenberg Space Force Base, the Starlink 2-8 mission on board a Falcon 9 rocket. This is uh, a mission that was delayed from earlier in the week. It was scheduled originally for tomorrow. Then it was uh, booked for Thursday. The latest uh, update we've received indicates it's now scheduled for uh, Friday late morning hours around, 11 around noon, actually, Pacific time, around 3 p.m. Eastern time carrying a batch of Starlink Internet satellites into orbit. And then later Friday evening, right around sunset, around 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time, 23.30 UTC, we'll have our next live stream from here at Cape Canaveral for a Falcon 9 launch from Pad 40 at the Space Force Station, carrying two television broadcasting satellites for the international uh, telecom satellite operator SES. These two satellites will be providing C-band television broadcast coverage over North America. For those of you who have been watching our coverage in recent days, a big focus of that has been our coverage and streaming of Relativity Space's first ever launch attempt from Cape Canaveral with their Terran 1 rocket. That mission has been scrubbed twice now. Uh, the latest indication from uh, notice to air missions or NOTAMs uh, from the Federal Aviation Administration indicate that launch is currently targeted for no earlier than Monday, March the 20th on a test flight attempting to reach orbit for the first time with a 3D printed rocket. Uh, that launch schedule has not been confirmed, I should say, from Relativity Space yet. So we have a question mark there. That's uh, currently the target, uh, perhaps the no earlier than date, for the next launch attempt for Relativity's Terran 1, according to the FAA. Amid all this activity, uh, United Launch Alliance is busy out at Pad 41, which you're looking at live here at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, lit up tonight a couple of miles south of where the Falcon 9 departed from 28 minutes ago. The ULA's first 
Vulcan rocket, their first flight qualified Vulcan Centaur, is on Pad 41 undergoing testing this week in preparation for its first launch attempt, first test flight, currently targeted for no earlier than May the 4th. These tests that are underway this week include tanking tests of the Centaur upper stage. We saw last week a tanking test of the Vulcan first stage booster. And then in the coming weeks, uh, perhaps at the end of March or sometime in April, we expect a flight readiness firing or test firing of the two Blue Origin built BE-4 engines on the bottom of the first stage. It'll be a hold down firing of those engines lasting about six seconds. We'll be streaming that live from Cape Canaveral when it happens as well. So United Launch Alliance doesn't have a lot of um, launch activity this month, uh, this spring, so far this year, uh, but they're busy testing their next generation rocket here at the Cape. And we'll leave you once more at the looking at the empty pad, Launch Complex 39A, where the Strongback uh, is still in its retracted position. It'll be lowered uh, horizontal, uh, likely later tonight or sometime tomorrow. And then it will be returned to the hangar. Actually, it'll be reconfigured, likely, before we see it roll back, it'll be reconfigured uh, for SpaceX's next Falcon Heavy launch. That'll be combining three Falcon 9 cores together. That requires some adjustment of the reaction frame and the strongback and the transporter erector. So some of that activity may be underway in the coming days and weeks. And the next launch from Pad 39A we anticipate will be the next Falcon Heavy launch scheduled for no earlier than April the 8th. So again, thank you for joining us tonight. It was a fun launch. Uh, I've been talking you through the countdown and the flight of the Falcon 9 rocket. The Cargo Dragon now on the way to the International Space Station. My name is Stephen Clark, editor of Space Flight Now. I want to thank our publisher, Stephen Young, for the video support tonight. And we'll see you next time. Our next live stream currently is targeted for Friday night. That'll be a Falcon 9 launch from here at the Cape with two commercial TV broadcast satellites on board. Have a great evening.